Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Have you ever had your 1996 to 1999 Jeep 4.0 spaz out on you? Run like crap, get bad fuel economy, miss fire and sputter and you don't know why? Well, we're going to get down to the bottom of it today. So here is the scenario. You jump in your Jeep, whether it's hot or cold, day or night, crank on the engine, it starts up just fine and it runs normal. No check engine light, no problem. Everything seems normal, so you put it in reverse, you back out of your driveway. Start heading down the block. And about a quarter mile down the road, your engine starts sputtering and misfiring real bad. You feel like your Jeep's gonna crap out, it's got no power, it's running sloppy. Then all of a sudden, before you know it, it's magically better and it's running just fine. Now this problem pisses you off a lot, but the Jeep still gets you from point A to point B. You scratch your head, you think to yourself, I did the plugs, I did the wires, I did the distributor, I did the coil, I did the sensors. You don't want to get too deep into it because it still runs, so you just deal with the problem. It drives you crazy, but it still works. Well, there it is again, guys. So we are at our wit's end. We don't know what's going on. It's been misfiring, loss of power, loss of gas mileage. It smells like gas coming out of the exhaust pipes. It's running really rich. So here's what's actually going on. You ready for this? All car problems aside, here's the main concern, public service announcement. A lot of you guys called me out saying I wasn't wearing my seatbelt enough in these clips. And you're absolutely right. Thank you for keeping me in check. This is very important, this saves lives. I've seen firsthand the devastation not wearing a seatbelt can cause. So remember to always wear your seatbelt, it will save your life. Back to the issue at hand. You got a bad upstream O2 sensor. So if you wanna know for sure if it is your O2 sensor, here's what you gotta do. You gotta get out of the Jeep. Gotta go underneath the Jeep. Ugh. Careful, it's hot. You're gonna locate your upstream O2 sensor and you are going to unplug it. There we go, unplugged. That's what it looks like, it's the gray one. All right, O2 sensor is unplugged. Starts up, no problem, just like before. Still no check engine lights. Let's see if we get any more misfires. All right guys, it is running better already. I'm even getting better fuel economy. There is no misfiring, no smells of gas in the exhaust. It's not running as rich. It is fixed, fixed. Since we unplugged the O2 sensor, we've had a pleasant drive to the auto parts store. No more misfire, no sputtering. We do have a check engine light though. Funny how it runs better, but now we have a check engine light. Well, here's what's going on. The easiest way for me to explain this is your O2 sensors detect emissions. Your upstream O2 sensor detects emissions prior to being burnt off by the cat. And over time, all the hydrocarbons can foul this O2 sensor. It's kind of like it's drunk. It's had a lot to drink and it doesn't know it's drunk and it keeps ordering more drinks. So your computer says, hey, this O2 sensor detects a lean mixture. So let's dump some more fuel into the engine and we'll, we'll richen this up and we'll give the power back to the engine. But what's happening in reality is it's fine. It just doesn't know it. So you're dumping a lot more fuel into the engine and it can't burn it off. So that's why you're getting the misfire, especially when it's cold, when you just start your trip. So. Your O2 sensor says, hey, more gas. Your engine, your, your computer says, okay, here it is. And you're misfiring and it can't handle it. But then it heats up a little bit. Your engine can keep up with the burning of all this, uh, this fuel. And then you start running better. But still you have poor fuel economy. It's sloppy. Um, 
you had that misfire and that's just your O2 sensor not doing its job. So you realize this when you unplug that O2 sensor. Now you go into this, let's say uh, it's a default mode. I guess it's probably um, a mix of the curve for best power and best fuel economy that's just pre-programmed in these OBD, OBD2 Jeeps. So yeah, again, 96 to 99, you're gonna have this problem, OBD2 with your distributor ignition. I think that's the most prevalent problem um mainly 98s everybody says hey it's my 98 so that's what this is but yeah that's your problem you got a you got a drunk upstream o2 sensor so we know it works um well we know it doesn't work now because we unplugged it now we have a check engine light and it's reading that you have no o2 sensor so we got the default mode it runs better so now we got our check engine light we're gonna go into the auto parts store we're gonna pick up our o2 sensor that we ordered online that's right guys you get your discount code online and then you go pick it up you save yourself like 20 percent. it's great so all right we're gonna go get our part and hopefully we have enough daylight to install this thing okay All right guys, it's been about five days since I pulled that wire from the O2 sensor. We still got the check engine light because it detects the O2 sensors not plugged in, but it's been running fine. So that just confirms that the O2 sensor was the problem. I put well over a hundred miles on it and no other issues have arisen. So uh, yeah, let's go get in that new O2 sensor. We're gonna need our O2 sensor, obviously. And this is what they look like. Got your wire, you got your plug, it's the gray plug. And uh, we got our sensor that's capped off. <laughs> Don't forget to remove the cap, guys. And this is uh, a 7 8 little hex nut. So you're gonna want a 7 8 wrench and, yep, 7 8 It comes pre-lubed, so that's just dandy. And we may also need this guy. This is an oxygen sensor wrench. In case you can't get enough leverage with this, it's got a little 3 8 drive. You could just pop this on. So we'll see what we could do. We'll, uh, we'll wiggle out the old one, put on the new one. Should be simple. Here's a much better look. There's the connector, and now we're over here by the transmission lines. Again, we're on the driver's side of the vehicle. There is the lower rad hose and our O2 sensor has been unplugged, that's why we got the check engine light, and that's why it has been driving a little better. Now this default mode we're driving in ain't perfect. It's better to get information from the sensors to the computer to adjust in real time the optimal condition your vehicle should be driving in. But now we know that the O2 sensor is fouled, so it's running better unplugged than it is getting faulty information and running rich and misfiring and running all sloppy. All right, let's get to it. All right, here is our 7 8 Let's see if we can give this a turn. There's not much room to work with. Yahoo, this sucker's on tight. Uh, I'd really like to turn the engine on, warm it up a little bit, but I'm working under here and I don't want to burn myself on the exhaust. So if I can't get it off with the oxygen sensor wrench, then I'm going to turn it on, warm it up. Come on, baby. All right, all right, all right. There we go. Get that on snug, snugly. We'll see if this gives us a little extra leverage. <laughs> All right, do not get this O2 sensor wrench. Jeez. Ran it for a few minutes. Let's see if that did the trick. Oh yeah, she's hot. And you know what? Since it's a bad O2 sensor, I'm just gonna go ahead and nip these wires because don't need them anymore. And now I can slide on my 12 point. Hopefully we'll get a more even grip. Well, the engine heat didn't work. Maybe the burns of will give it a little convincing.
Yeah. 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 Got you. Woohoo. Wow. <laughs> yeah, man. This thing did not want to budge. Woo wee. But she is screaming hot right now. I'm just gonna back it off a little bit more and then I'm gonna wait for it to cool down. There we go. All right. That is good enough for now. While the O2 sensor is cooling down, I just wanna take a, another look at this tool, see how, why it failed. Oh, well, look at this. Cheap, crappy, cast metal. Look at that. Broke right at its weakest point. You know, a little beefier metal wouldn't hurt. Yep, I guess it's safe to say that this thing is pretty fouled. And here's a new one. It's looking uh, looking pretty new. <laughs> Let's get her in. There we go. Just want to make sure whatever you do, don't cross thread them. I think that's in there. go nice and snug Ugh. I don't think that's going anywhere anytime soon all right fish the O2 sensor wire right down the trans line attach it with this little clip up there and then over here it just plugs in it only goes in one way so let's make sure it's clipped on there we go and now the plug will slide on this little track right here there we go all right, O2 sensor installed. Fantastic. Let's start her up, Let's see how she does. Come on, Grievous. Just waiting on that misfire. I don't think it's happening. All right guys, new O2 sensor is in. It is plugged in and this thing has been running for quite some time now. No rough idles, no misfires. So I think it's safe to say we solved the O2 sensor problem. Now I knew it was the O2 sensor when we unplugged it and it immediately started running better. We sent the computer into an open loop system. It's a default system. It, it's pre-programmed into the PCM to let the vehicle run without any O2 sensor readings. And it was doing much better than running with a fouled O2 sensor. So the new O2 sensor is in. We plugged it back in and it's been running on a closed loop system now and it's just fine. So problem solved and all we got to do is address the check engine light. Now in a few cycles it should turn off. A few cycles of the ignition key on and off and driving it around will get O2 sensor readings and it should solve that problem. But I'm going to dig in with my OBD2 Bluetooth scanner and we'll uh, clear it ourselves. All right let's clear this check engine light. Turn it off, put it in the accessory mode, make sure our Bluetooth is on. Come on, OBD2, there we go, pair it up. One, two, three, four, five. Pair this bad boy. All right, open up our app. Let's see. Connecting. Come on, baby. All right, connected, fault codes, scan. There we go, O2 sensor fault. Look at that, what do you know? All right, let us clear it. And okay, there we go, goes right off. Ta-da, start her up again. Yeah, Grievous, all right. 
All right, guys, that is going to do it for my how to diagnose an O2 sensor misfire and repair it in the General Grievous video. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, remember to like, subscribe, and I will catch you guys on the next project. Peace.